the girl promised me a way out. And I was desperate enough to believe her. Well, you gotta name this? Elizabeth. For the DLCs, I will say that once again, this is a story about Booker and Elizabeth. And in the first part of this two-part DLC, we see very much the relationship between Booker and Elizabeth in Rapture. For the second part where you're playing as Liz, this is very much her story. With Elizabeth, by the time you get to the, the second part of um, Barrel at Sea, we felt that we had developed her enough that actually the interesting thing to do was to merge the player with her. She's got a sort of different role to play in Burial at Sea in terms of where she is at in her arc, but we thought it was very important, especially, and I'm not going to say what happens, but the end of the first Burial at Sea, that Elizabeth goes through another sort of realization, and to put you then in her shoes we thought was going to be something very powerful. With the player getting the opportunity to see how Liz is experiencing the world through first person, we have to be ever so careful to not betray what the player has already experienced of Liz in Infinite and what they're going to experience of Liz in the first part of the DLC. That's always foremost on our mind because Liz is such a different character to Booker. And if we were to just, and this is a horrible image, just put Booker in a dress, suddenly she's got these you know, huge biceps and she's running around the place with a ginormous machine gun that you know, there's absolutely no way that I could pick up and she's just mowing down people after, you know, wave after wave of enemies, then that would be the most awful betrayal of what we're doing for Liz, and players would just feel like it was a cheap way out, and it's not something that we want to do. So we're, we don't have all of the answers yet for it, but we are very, very much aware of all of the dangers that we need to try and avoid. So Elizabeth has to take things more from the side view. She needs to be kind of thinking in a roundabout way of how to deal with her enemies. And sometimes that might mean completely bypassing the enemy entirely because she doesn't need to. It may mean in other situations using the enemy's strength against them. There's all of these different kinds of ways of being more thoughtful and I hesitate to say it, almost more feminine way of approaching a problem where there's all of these people and they have the advantage in strength. But Elizabeth has the advantage in smarts. So how that pans out and how that you know plays the environment, I'm awfully excited to do. You know, it'll be fantastic. Joss Whedon actually did a really interesting interview about Buffy, and he said, you know, how do you make people care about Buffy? She's the superhero, she's all powerful, and he said, you don't, you don't put her in physical danger, you put her in emotional danger, because you care so much about the character and you want things for her. There's lots of kinds of risk out there, lots of kind of danger, and lots of um, things that challenge us, and generally, on the everyday experience, you know, we're generally, most people aren't in physical danger, but there's still stakes, still very large stakes. And the stake of survival in a game is often, everybody knows is not a real one, you know? So that's not even actually very powerful in a lot of cases because generally you know that it's, the character is going to survive generally. Sometimes you don't, you know, and you play with that and you can use that and that can be powerful, but generally that's, it's a bit of a false danger. Some things for the playable Liz will have to be the same. It's just a, a case of we don't have enough time to make an entirely new game. We're building on an existing you know, set of systems and all the rest of it. We're not you know, all of a sudden going to go, it's going to be a top-down game. You know, this is not something that we're going to take on here. However, I will say that more than anything, we are trying to focus on making sure that the feel of playing as Elizabeth and just moving through the environment is a very different experience, both in the way that the player interacts with their control pad or their mouse and keyboard, and in the way that the player is thinking about the environment. Because they say that most of the game is played in the player's mind. It's almost like we want to take some of what we moved on from in Bioshock 1 and bring some of that back, where the environment is very much this threatening character in the world and you're understanding that this, this environment has some malice to it and you're always unsure whether or not it's going to come around and get you or if there's going to be someone around the next corner. We just want this feeling of tension and oppression and this, this really thick atmosphere to be really pressing down on you every time you're moving around the place. And there'll be moments of, you know, bright sunlight and, you know, relief and everything like that because, you know, even Shakespeare had his comedy relief moments. This is very much about 
not feeling like you're the god of guns running through you know, the skies of Colombia, leaping around the place, like we have no care in the world or anything like that. This is very much grounded. This is very much intimidating and feeling like it's rich and full. And Elizabeth should feel like this is part of the world and it is out to get her. She can't just take it easy and just saunter through it all. It's not going to work that way. Oh, shit! What is that? It's a terror. Elizabeth and her tear abilities are not necessarily a win button. She has an understanding of this universe and the various universes that she can visit. And she knows, once again, constants and variables. There are some things that she can change and some things that just won't make a difference if she changes them or not. So she is not entirely godlike in her abilities. She will have far more you know, powerful ways of interacting with the world than we saw in you know, Infinite proper. But at the same time, it won't just be a case of walking into the space and going, I'm just going to press a button and now happy ending for everyone. On the one hand, that wouldn't be any fun. And on the other hand, I think that unfortunately things are never going to be that easy for Liz. She has to fight for her happy endings. In terms of whether this is our Elizabeth in the core game, I, I think, you know, I'd rather people to wait and see. I would say that she's definitely changed by what she's gone through. You're picking up after the events of Infinite, and this is a person who's um, seen all the things you've seen in Infinite, and that's, that's had an effect on her. Liz in Rapture is very much a continuation of the Liz that we saw in Infinite. This is not some brand new, we have no idea who this person is. We're going to be learning an awful lot more about the Liz that we meet in Rapture. She's got an awful lot more to give in that respect. She's got some depth to her that I think will surprise players in incredible ways. She's going to keep surprising players. There's no way that you're going to be sat there thinking, oh yeah, I could see that.